dialogues where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen. And I'm Huyen Gao. Uh, usually, it's one person interviewing the other one, but this is our first episode, so I'll be interviewing Huyen and she'll interview me back. Well, let's get going. Okay. So Huyen, where are you based and what do you do? Um, I'm an Android developer, I'm an independent contractor, mm -hmm. and I'm based in awesome Denver, Colorado. Yeah, where are we in Denver right now? Right. <laughs> Cool. And how do you get started on Android development? Um, well, first I did computer engineering school, and then I did web, and then I was like, well, I, you know, mobile was becoming really big, and Android was kind of, it was new, you know, AOSP was out, and I was like, well, that's kind of cool, and I, I had some friends who did Android, so I just jumped in, and, and then I've been there ever since, and cool. it's been great. So. Yay! And uh, so, I mean, both of us do a lot of different things, but it seems to me that lately you've been playing with the Camera 2 API. Mm -hmm. I have no time to play with it at all, so I want to just kind of get a quick bring, like, bring dump of like, what, what's new about it, what's mm -hmm. better from previous version of the Camera API. Okay, well, um, for anybody who's played with the Camera 1 API, you know, mm -hmm. it's actually, um, it's a pretty decent API, you can mm -hmm. do a lot with it. Um, but there was kind of like a lot of things that it was missing. Like, um, it, it's kind of like a black box. So it, it was really easy to use and get, well, easy, relatively easy right. to use and start up. But it was kind of hard for, you know, um, manufacturers or you know, device manufacturers to kind mm -hmm. of add new things like burst mode or, or kind of like really more hardcore photography features like, okay. you know, manual exposure and doing all that kind of stuff. Mm. So camera, the camera API 2 is actually based on kind of a new kind of interface with the drivers that's a lot mm -hmm. more open. It's not much of a black box, it's actually exposing more of like the underlying kind of nuts and bolts of the camera. And then it actually builds on top of that to give the developer more control over, you know, camera features and different parts that, you know, allow you to do things like, you know, the really fancy camera stuff. So like. I can do HDR for example and like change exposure and just snap, snap, snap. Yeah, well, well, that's actually one thing. Um, another big thing about Camera API mm -hmm. 2 is that it's all about metadata. Oh, okay. So it, it's actually really cool because when you make requests and results, mm -hmm. they're actually metadata objects. So it's, it's all about data, data, data. Mm -hmm. So before you kind of got limited information back and things like HDR, it's all about like feedback. Like, okay, so this first shot and then this exposure, this right. next shot is exposure. And it's actually a lot easier to do that for developers now that you know, you have so much metadata coming back. So you get kind of like, you, you always will know what kind of exposure you ask for and then mm -hmm. what exposure you actually get back. So things like that are actually easier to do with Camera API 2. So what, is, what would be the Hello World app of Camera API 2? Like if I want to just tinker with it, I don't mm -hmm. have a particular like, a use case that I need it for. Mm -hmm. Like what, what would you build? Uh, oh, well, just really simple. The first mm -hmm. thing you always um, should start out doing is just start a preview. And that's, that's usually pretty hard but enough. But like pr a camera one, you can do that too, like do a preview. Yeah, well, it's actually kind of different now. The way that you start a preview is different. Mm. So before, like the camera one, you literally said start the preview, right? take picture. Now everything is kind of, um, it, they've generalized it. So it's like, here's a request. Mm -hmm. And you have to know, oh, well, um, I need to pass in this constant or this value that says, mm -hmm. I want this or this type of request is a preview. And then it knows to set up the camera for preview because previews um, are a little bit different than other kind of captures. So um, you'd actually look at um, basically um, getting the list of cameras on the device. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to pick out the camera you want. Right, from and the then, back. Or right, the back of the front. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to um, actually open that camera, which is basically means your app takes possession of it mm -hmm. uh, or takes control of it. And then you have to start, um, and this is a very new thing with camera, mm -hmm. instead of just opening a camera and like doing stuff with it, you have to open what's called a camera capture session. Okay. Right. And it, um, and then it's because of the more kind of uh, deeper control of it, there's right. a lot more setup that mm -hmm. you're exposed to. So that's kind of partly what the camera capture session is for. And then that's also becomes your gateway for like requests. So then you send your capture request or your repeating requests to that session with all the parameters that you want. It feels almost like I'm talking to a web server. The way it you is. Yeah, it. it's, it's actually a lot more like kind of, yeah, client, ser like, yeah. Uh, client service kind of oriented. And that, I think that's like the point. And it also makes a lot of things more efficient. Mm -hmm. Like um, this might be a little more kind of hardware based, but it actually is pipeline, like the camera's pipeline. Mm -hmm. So you can, uh, it's actually a little bit more performant because then you can actually submit a whole bunch of requests at once. And they, they you know, so it's pipeline. So they, they kind of, um, 
because you know you can actually get a little better performance out of the camera nice. and uh, yeah, they, they try to focus a lot on requests being non-blocking you right. know so um, but that also means that as a programmer you have to be more cognizant about you know well, much like talking to a web server, you yeah. have to have callbacks and then what if exactly. it fails yeah. and Asynchronous what do you tell the user? And, exactly. Uh, it's just a lot harder. Whereas like, so it's, it's almost it's like... It's more powerful, but with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but it, it, it is kind of like, and I just thought it the other day, mm. it's like camera one's like a point and shoot camera, right? Mm. It, it's really good That's for most way, people. Yeah. yeah. But there's only so much you can do, right. and for most people it's pretty okay. Whereas like camera API two might be more like a DSLR kind of like lots of knobs, yeah, between lots of and, knobs. Yeah. It's easier to kind of mess things up. But overall, if you know what you're doing, you can really do some cool stuff. So yeah, great. I wow. just thought of that in the shower the other day. Showers like, are the best yeah. <laughs> like for inspirations. Um, no, seriously. I, I mean, I do a lot of thinking. I don't think in the shower, but just like somehow the shower environment brings it up to the foreground. So, oh yeah, that's yeah. A good it's like when well, you're not really doing much. You're just kind of like on autopilot. So you're just like thinking about things. Great. So, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah so it'll um, be, you have an upcoming talk about this. I do, and it happens to be a GDG Boulder run by Yay. a really cool girl I know. Yeah. Um. So. Hopefully we'll get to know even more about that and yeah. like after well I'll try to record that so maybe I'll also link that um, so we should watch out for that too. too. Yay! Cool. Yay. Cool. I guess it's your turn. Okay, so we're gonna that. flip it and we're gonna talk to Chiki Chan. Uh, so Chiki, um how did you get started in Android and where are you based or the other way around? <laughs> where are you based and how did you get started in Android? I moved to Colorado last year. Um so I live around thirty minutes north of Denver. Um, so we're hanging out in Denver right now. I also do a lot of stuff in Boulder. And then, how did I get started with Android? That's a good question. I actually, I used to work at Google, uh, but I was in some other team and then I was on that team for a pretty long time and mm -hmm. I decided that I want to try something different. Mm -hmm. At that point, Android has not launched yet. Um, so the team was still internal. And uh, I have some friends working on it. And I say, you know, this place looks really cool. And it's just very exciting to be on, on the pre-launch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I was actually in the war room. Like, yeah. I mean, like there are multiple war rooms, actually. I was in the server <laughs> team war room because like, there were multiple things happening. Um, so basically, we were a little bit worried. Basically, when all the devices get activated, like the servers will melt. Nothing mm -hmm. happened, but it was just <laughs> kind of like, you know, war room, right? Just something yeah, exciting. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing Android on and off because I was on that on the server team and I switched to Google Maps for Android mm -hmm. and then I left Google I was uh, with some startups doing some web stuff actually mm -hmm. and then I came back to Android as an independent developer. That's awesome. I, yeah. I actually I just got an image of you like hitting the beach at Normandy but with like an Android and it's like <laughs> oh just like you know kind of paving the way for the rest of us. Um, you know I, I, I kind of like in my mind one of the things that I think about when I, when I think Chuki Chan I think like espresso and you're like the espresso lady <laughs> to me. Can uh -huh. you talk about like how you got into using espresso and kind of maybe you know what your yeah so how did you get started with this? Right. I mean I always liked the concept of unit testing. Mm -hmm. So before I got into Android I was doing other things right like like in Ruby on Rails for example oh, you yeah. can do Sweet. like pretty easy you know testing the whole thing is set up mm -hmm. for that um android not so much i mean i tried in the early days but there's a lot of things where essentially what happens is the ui comes up and then your testing thread was like hey button that do you say hello and then the button is not rendered yet so right like, so no because the button's not rendered yet so like early days testing was really really painful yeah, yeah. Uh, but when espresso came out they really make it easy in terms of they watch the UI thread to make mm -hmm. sure that it's not busy. So wait until the UI thread is done re like rendering essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't know that the UI thread is rendering. I mean, yeah. The UI thread can be doing all kinds of things, but it waits until the UI thread has no events scheduled on it. Mm -hmm. Then the test thread can go ahead and check things. So that makes it much, much easier. Cause it used to be that if you want to make sure the UI is rendered, you pretty much say sleep. <laughs> like, or you loop it if you're fancy, so you loop and sleep until like, the button is there, uh, and then your timeout is not. So it used to be really clumsy. Um, so I was really excited when Expresso came out, and then I've been using it for a year or so, by mm -hmm. now, maybe a year and a half. Um, and it's not really test driven development, like pure just test driven development yeah. is when people write the test first and then write the uh, program. So I, I set up my Expresso so that I have. I use it with Dagger as well, which is dependency injection. So during test time, rather than talking to the production server, mm -hmm. I have um, essentially a mock web server that's running within oh. the test. Cool. Yeah. Um, so then what happened is the server team is not ready yet. They haven't implemented the, the uh, function that I need to call on the server, mm -hmm. but we already agreed on the API, which is just a JSON file, which then 
get translated into a normal Java object, mm -hmm. right? So I can actually mock those things out and then I can test the UI by making the web server return whatever I want it to return and then verify that it renders. And I do both the automatic verification mm -hmm. and I also just look at it and see what <laughs> it's doing and see if it's rendering the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of interesting that I end up using Espresso that way. Um, I wasn't expecting that at all. Most, um, when I first got started, I thought it would be great for regression. Mm -hmm. You know what happens, right? Like you should you add this new feature and then what happens when you swap some common utility class and then you may break things and you, you don't have the confidence that... I mean, yeah. sure, you can go around and like, click around and make sure you go through all the code paths. Yeah, but... But having an automatic test that actually tells you that, okay, whatever you have written test for, I have verified that mm -hmm. it is still correct behavior. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, but it also did surprising things for me. So like, I remember once I had some tests that the app itself has a screen that has a map fragment on it, mm -hmm. right? And then all I did, all I did was updated uh, Google Play services yeah. from one version to the other. Ooh. And then I just run <laughs> the test. And it failed, and <laughs> I'm, I forgot what exactly I did. So uh, somehow it turned out that if I specify for that version, I mean, it's not true anymore, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you f if I specify the map fragment in XML, then it doesn't work. Uh, really? Yeah, for some reason, I have to do it programmatically. I think I was doing some other fancy things about like, fragment in the fragment and like, Ooh, things like okay. that. I forgot what exactly yeah. I did, but I was just like, <gasps> Wow, testing actually works. It actually catch bugs because, right? It just seems so innocent. Like oh, I'm just changing this Gradle file. Right. right. You can actually yeah. do anything. Mm -hmm. Um. So, um, but but then like, and then I started writing blogs about it because mm -hmm. I feel like, uh, people are still well. At least some people, like either new people maybe are not aware that a framework like that exists, mm -hmm. or old people like me. I still remember the bad yeah, times time that when you testing. keep being burned. So yeah. I just kind of want to tell people that, hey, look, this thing yeah, is really a whole cool. new world, guys. Yeah, you know, testing actually ways. works. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, maybe I should write also just stories like what I just told instead of like very, yeah. very technical, this is how you do things to do the motivation part as well. Mm -hmm. I, when I write blogs, I tend to be very technical. I, yeah. I want to share code samples. I mm -hmm. want to have the screenshots to show like, what exactly I'm trying yeah, to achieve. Yeah, practical, like, very, yeah. you know. I don't do a lot of kind of fire style storytelling. That's like, oh, that one time when I upgraded Google Play services, <laughs> um, Expresso totally saved my life. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't do that. But that, that may be something that is also interesting for people. The why of it. Like, right. before, I mean, there are other frameworks like Robotium and things like that. And I remember going to, like, conferences and mm -hmm. chatting with people. I like, is it worth my time? Or should I do it? Mm -hmm. And I didn't really get a very satisfactory answer. So I didn't spend the initial setup time, right? That's like a lot of these frameworks. You have to get the initial setup ready, mm -hmm. and then use it a while, and then then you see the benefit, right? For Espresso, it's like a few months until you find the first like bug, right? Because right. when you write a test that just passed, it's like cool, it passed, but mm -hmm. the value is when it tells you when things break or <laughs> um, things like that. So I'm hoping that more people are getting into Android testing now that the tools are way better. Yeah, well, you should write a book about Espresso. And I'm joking because <laughs> I've heard uh, Chiki mentioned that she might write a book on Espresso. Yeah. So how, how are you feeling about that these days? What do you, what do you Um. So I did the table of contents pretty much. Okay. And I posted it on my blog and people seem to be interested. Yeah. I just heard that there's a lot of work writing a book. So I'm yes, a little bit I've hesitant. <laughs> I'm a little bit hesitant. Um, I may end up doing video classes first. Oh, um, awesome, yeah. yeah, I've... I've done two video classes on mm -hmm. uh, custom components and Android layouts. Mm -hmm. And I feel like because I've been giving talks, I'm more familiar with that medium yeah. rather than I feel like in, when I'm writing a book, I have to be extra, extra clear because there's not as much um, visual in terms of like, OK, you can see me actually type in the IDE right, and I'm right. doing these things while I talk, whereas the book is more like Oh, text, mm -hmm. text, okay, screenshot, text, mm -hmm. text. I don't know, I'm imagining things. Yeah, it has um, to be a real blueprint rather than just kind of like someone watching you and being able to kind of emulate what you're doing. You have to right. be really explicit yeah, about Yeah, so, so yeah. it's a little bit different. Um, so I, I may try that first. Like, And then also I need to come up with code samples because a lot of my things, blog posts, talks, they are all driven by the code samples. So mm -hmm. once I come up with the good samples, maybe writing the book will be mm -hmm. a breeze, who knows. But right now I don't have that yet, so maybe I'll come up with that for my video courses first. And if anyone has anything specific they'd love to see in a video or a blog 
or something, they should can they can they email you and just hey Chuki, how um, do I do this with espresso? Yeah, or, so keep asking. <laughs> yeah, I I tend not to do one on one emails because I feel like when we have the discussion out in the open, then other people can benefit right. as yeah, well. Yeah, totally. Um, so I usually encourage people if it's like a quick thing, you can send me a tweet on Twitter mm -hmm. or Google Plus if you prefer. Um, if it's something longer, then post it on Stack Overflow and then ping me on Twitter and oh, say, hey, I posted idea. a question. Um, that way, you know, maybe I'm busy that week, I'm not looking at it, but other people look at it, maybe you get an answer from somebody else, oh, cool. rather than it sitting in my inbox and just rotting. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I'm busy working. working. Um, so yeah, definitely, like, feel free to ask me. I think I know what help my video course and my blog and books and whatnot, right? Because sometimes I have certain idea of how things are done, but other people have other use cases and other blocks that they like run into mm -hmm. that I didn't encounter myself. So definitely uh, feel free to send me your questions. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Chuki. Well, thank you so much, Gwen. <laughs> it's a little bit odd to interview each other. I know. I'm just like, well, okay. So, so. Yeah. Um, so I guess we should do our last bit about where people should find us on the internet. Okay. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Queen Code Monkey, all one word. Um, or you can find me on Google Plus, and my blog is randomlytyping.com. Uh, the easiest way to find me is on Twitter. My handle is Chuki, C H I U K I. Uh, Google Plus, you can search my name, but I think my plus thing is plus Chuki Chan, so C H I U K I C H A N. Well, with that, hopefully, I'll see you in some other episodes. Absolutely. Bye! Bye.